Welcome to the history Welcome to the culture Welcome to the community that dreams and achieves Living in change For better tomorrow Welcome to the Eunice Malash Show Hello, welcome to the Eunice Malash Show. I'm your host Eunice Malash. We have an interesting show lined up for you today. On today's program, we're going to go ahead and feature a Vatican priest by the name of Father Mark Opere Omol. He's from South Sudan. As a young man, he decided to join the priesthood in Italy. So he is actually a South Sudanese Italian. So he went ahead and went through the whole training to become a priest and he was ordained there in Italy. So he's going to go ahead and share his experience on why he chose to become a priest and how it has transformed his life. So enjoy. Thank you so much to the Eunice Malad Show program. I'm glad to be your guest today. My name is Father Mark Opere Omo. I'm a South Sudanese Catholic priest. I'm 29 years old and I'm based in Italy. I'm here to share my, my life and my experience so as to reach the youth who will be following the show program. First and foremost, where did I study my seminary? What is the seminary? The seminary is the place where young men go to prepare themselves to become priests. I studied my seminary in Verona from the minor seminary to the major seminary and to the conclusion. Now, before joining the seminary, what happened to me that made me to decide to join the seminary, to become a priest? As a little boy, I met some religious sisters who inspired me to think of religious vocation. And they did everything possible to help me understand whether I was called for priestly life or not. And the process of doing that, we refer to it as discernment, vocational discernment. Vocational discernment is the process by which a young person is accompanied by experienced person in the field to understand deeper in themselves if they have a call to respond to from God. And that's what happened to me. I had the chance to meet some religious sisters who accompanied me for a period of time and we together came to a conclusion to understanding that truly God was reaching out to me, asking me to become a priest. And on the basis of the help from those sisters and my personal feeling after sufficient period of discernment, I came to the idea that I would join the seminary because I was like ready to prepare myself to serve God in priesthood. And I was brought to Italy. Now, what are the challenges that I faced upon arrival to Italy being a new country. I had the, the, the privilege of speaking Italian before going to Italy. I had met some missionaries, some Italian missionaries in the past, and I got impressed by the way they spoke their language. And I always thought I could learn that language in some day, just for cultural reason. And I committed myself and I learned the language. So the first 
good thing that helped me to insert myself into the community was the knowledge of the language. Of course, I did not speak the language perfectly, but I had the sufficient basis, the grammatical basis to cop up and to perfect my Italian with the time. So I joined the seminary. And the first year in the pre-major seminary, we were like 18 of us in the class in Verona. And I was the only African. I remember we had like one Vietnamese and one Filipino and the rest were all Italian. So another new challenge to be faced is, was actually coping up with people coming from different geographical entities and backgrounds. But again, the will and the zeal and the desire to respond to the call helped me develop the right attitude and mechanism to cope up with life. And I must thank God, I must thank my formatives and the superiors who helped me get inserted safely into the community. So I'm very thankful to God. Now let me talk of one thing that I thought was important to me. A young man like me deciding to join seminary and becoming a priest. What can I make of all this? On the basis of my faith, the faith that I received first from my mother and my father, from my Christian community, and from testimonies, people who live the faith in an exemplary manner, was that each life has a vocational sense of direction. The meaning of this is, we are always called in our life to respond to something that is useful for ourselves and useful for community. Basically means life is open to good and beneficial relationship, mutually beneficial relationship. That's what I call as the vocational sense of existence. On the basis of that, as a, young, as a young man, I decided to dedicate myself to becoming priest. I studied the years of, this, of, the, of the philosophy and eventually joined the, the major seminary for theology, which I finished successfully, and I got ordained as priest. I got consecrated as priest in Italy and I had the great joy of having my mother and my father plus representative of priests and laity coming all the way from Africa to rejoice with me during my ordination. What was the ordination to me? The ordination was a summing up, concluding a together of elements that helped me prepare myself to priesthood. So, I consider my being a priest as a result of four elements, which I need to explain in detail to help my fellow youth understand that, yes, in our life we can achieve so many things. First, because our personal effort. Second, because some other people believe in us and they stand by us and they accompany us. So, my vocation to priesthood and my being a priest today is the result of gift and grace of God. God has a gift and grace for me. Second, the effort and the trust of so many men and women who accompanied me throughout the years of formation in the seminary. Third, my personal effort I needed also to apply myself with all the difficulties 
and also with the energy and the resources that God has, en has endowed with my personality into practice in order to achieve, in order to go about the vocation. Third, fourth, the help of the Christian community where I was inserted. So all these four elements contributed in shaping my choice to respond to a vocation and becoming a priest. I must declare that I'm a very happy priest. I fail truly to be a priest. So I do not have a private life that is not priestly and a public life that is priestly. I fail in private and public a priest. In my whole total being, I am a priest and nothing else. That's the reason I have chosen to dress always as a priest. Now, I am based in England, and that's where, since my ordination, I have been assigned. How do I feel being in Italy? As a South Sudanese Italian young man, the first is as a priest, I feel I'm a missionary in a foreign land, although it's also my second home at the, uh, at the moment. I'm a missionary. That is, God has sent me among these people to bring to them the good news of the gospel. So I'm a missionary. I'm living as a missionary. Second thing, I have a special mandate from my ordinary. And the ordinary means the bishop that ordained me to priesthood. I was appointed upon, or upon ordination to represent the bishop in Europe, in Canada, and in the United States. And for this to happen, I needed to be accredited by the Holy See. The Holy See is like the Vatican, and we have some different departments in the Vatican there. So from the Department of the Evangelization of People, I got confirmed as the priest representing in Europe, in Canada, and in the United States. That's the basis of my frequent journeys all over the world to do my job as, as a priest. Precisely what do I do? Of course, don't forget, I'm a priest. So my first work is to reach out to people with the Word of God, missionary and priestly life, the apostolate. The apostolate is doing the work of God as somebody sent. So I have, vis I have been visiting extensively the United States so as to meet our Christian communities, help them grow spiritually in their Christian life, help them mature in their religious commitment, and also listen to some of their grievances, some of their difficulties, and eventually together with them, find ways to settle them, to, to help them go, go about. And I'm glad most of the visits to the United States have been very successful in the sense we, together with the, with the communities, tried and found out some ways to help the communities. And I must say, I'm very satisfied of most of my visits I will be concluding shortly my visits to the United States because in a, in a matter of a year I will have already visited all the states in the United States of America and I'll dwell to Canada. I will be doing the same thing with the people in, in, in Canada, visiting them through, to, from state to state, minister to them as a priest, help them grow spiritually in their Christian life and, and, and religious commitment and also listen to some of their problems that they face. Because as a priest, at times communities and individuals feel at, at ease, at peace, to reveal and share with me their problems that otherwise with some other people they cannot do. This is also one of the things that contribute to my joy of being a priest. I am a father. People refer to me as Father Matt. And therefore, they behave toward me as children, as daughters and sons. 
and I must take the responsibility of behaving like a father to them. I must show the fatherly, of course my fatherhood is a spiritual one. It's not biological because I, do, I don't have my biological children. These are my spiritual children. So I need to behave before them like a father, accompany them like a father, take care of them like a, fa a father and pay attention to them like a father. This is a great joy for me. And I must assure you, gentlemen, that this is such a wonderful opportunity to me. Of course, being a priest does not exclude, does not impede one from also being involved actively in social issues. I have taken also that to, to, to have. Now, social issues mean the same Christian person is also in a society that has good things and bad things, that has daily challenges and daily achievements. I cannot pay less attention to such kind of situation. So as a priest also, I'm open to listening to these situations, to understanding them, and helping my people to go about these social businesses, which is also the same challenge as a priest I, I, I may because as a priest I do not live in a secluded place like in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a place that is closed. I'm in a society so I know the political situation, I know the economical situations because I'm in touch with the situation and I think I, use, I can use my experience as a priest, the knowledge I have acquired throughout the years of formation, the experience I've accumulated by, by throughout my life as a person who has been socializing with different entities to help people in, the, in, in, in their life. Now, what is my message to you, youth? Just take these four points from me. And I think if you go deep into you, and even you see the environment around you, they are the same anywhere. Each one of us has something positive to contribute first to themselves and to others and what is the basis for that the basis for that is that from creation everybody is created by God good if you have some little I don't know familiarity with with with, with this holy scripture you can find in the book of Genesis, when God created man, he said it was very good. And that lays the first basis of the goodness in man, in each one of us. So each one of you youth, nobody excluded. Each one of us has the natural capacity and ability to do good to themselves and to others. And that's help in understanding our life, the, the vocational dimension of our life. The other simple word for understanding vocation is call. A call to do something or a call to be something. In the larger definition of call, because vocation is not only confined to becoming a priest, everything that we do in life is a call. So, a matrimony is a call, being a doctor is a call, being a nurse is a call. Whatever other professions that we do to help ourselves and to help the community are all calls. This is, that's the reason I emphasize the importance of understanding the vocational dimension of existence. Of existence. Now, when do we really respond to a call in our life. Is there a specific age to do that? Because so many people would be wondering, Father Mark is a young, is a young man, that means, I mean, he must have responded very early or he needed to have accumulated first experience in order to respond. No, 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 this is not true because even we have experience in life that certain things, certain 
things in our life that we would want to do, we begin to fill them from very early stage. Another thing is when we discover truly that we are for that, that's the process of all. You know what? If I should say something to all of you, and also to other elders, to other adults that might be listening, might be following the program is, we as young men, we need role models in our midst. Because the role models are the people inspiring and stimulating us to respond to the call that is in us. So it is always a tragedy and a bad sign. I would rather call it a serious crisis if in a society you do not find any more role models. We need role models that propose themselves to us as an inspiration, as a stimulant in order to come up, to bring out all the energies, all the, 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 the power that we have in us to respond to a call. So one important thing is the role model. Second important things that we need is actually our personal commitment to follow the example that is set before us because an act of education is an act of freedom. Nobody would force us to understand something that we have decided in our heart not to listen to. And nobody would force us to respond to a call that we don't feel. That's why it's an act of commitment and therefore an act of freedom. The third is the sense of responsibility. Joy, every one of us, simply because we are human beings and born in the category, in the class of human beings, we have responsibilities, not only toward ourselves, but we have responsibilities toward others. And you, you respond to your vocation and achieve what you want to be in order to be responsible. If the, the worst type of life one can ever lead is not being able to show responsibility to a personal life because that's also a recipe that you cannot be responsible towards others. So the responsibility, the dimension of responsibility in our life. Fourth, and I think this is very important to emphasize are the issue of the values, the values that we have in life. Each one of us, from our families, from our society, from our people, we have certain values that, that our ancestors, our parents, our elders believed in them use them to, to build their society, to build their personality. And we also grow into following those values in order to build our personality and our identities. So each one of us, each one of you guys, I believe has certain values that come from the family, that come from the society, that come from people, that have experience in life. So in this process of responding to one call, also the values do have great impact. And I must tell you, all these elements have been very helpful to me in shaping my life as a priest. I'm a young priest. I have no intention to change my life. I am very convinced that God has called me to be, to be a priest and that is my mission. So, whatever mission you have in life, whatever type of call you have in life, live it joyfully and totally. If you do not have joy in living what you have, you do not live it fully. Because we cannot, things that you do without happiness, without joy, you do not do them well. Only things that attract you, that, that, that makes you enjoy, that makes you feel good, is what you can do.
truly free for, for, for you. So I'm very happy that through this program of, uh, of UNIS Malad show program, I'm able to reach out to you young men and young ladies to share my experience and perhaps also to bring about the understanding that me becoming a priest there was nothing extraordinary about me that God decided that he should choose me because I was so special. I'm just like any one of you. I was like any one of you and God chose me from among many of my, of, of my similars. So there, there's no way that I, sh I should make the impression in people that I am a priest today because Actually, in, from the very beginning, I was so special. No way. The meaning of this is that God can reach out to you in whatever stage of life you are. And whatever stage of life you are is always suitable to respond to a call. So the call has no time. It is timeless, but should not be excluded from the life span because somewhere in my life someday and sometime some inspiration will come into me and that will put me into a, a, a mood of searching of discerning what I should do for life so guys don't worry if you don't feel special because I was never special I was just ordinary and the sense of being ordinary is actually very important so that whatever extraordinary things you want to do in life build it on your being ordinary i'm so grateful i am furthermore i'm joyful of my priesthood and i want to live my priesthood with the totality of my commitment and of my dedication and i truly feel a father to everybody i'm happy god bless you guys and you have a good time all thanks we have come to the conclusion of the program. We hope that um, hearing words and, and the inspirational story of Father Omol inspired you to go ahead and achieve whatever dreams that you might have. Uh, join us next time for another show here on the Eunice Mala Show. Thank you. If you believe, you can achieve.